Today we're going to talk about unions and intersections. And there are times when we want to determine the probability that either an event A has happened or an event B has happened. And one of the main topics that I'm going to talk about today is or. And as I've been working my way through this unit, like whenever I see or, I've been circling it. So if you start looking at um, answers on Canvas, you're oftentimes going to see or circled. But um, before we get there, we need to do a little bit of background. And to do this, when we're working with or, to do this, we need to be able to account for all outcomes that fall into either one of the two events. So we're going to, first of all, just look at um, a basic example with a Venn diagram. So if we look down on our paper here, we see this. It says, consider the spinner shown below. Um, that has been divided into eight equally sized sections of, the, of a circle. The spinner is spun once. In this experiment, we'll let A be the event of it landing on an even, and B be the event of landing on the primes. And we're going to fill in the Venn diagram um, below with the actual numbers from the spinner. So the whole set is set F. If you look at the Venn diagram in the upper right hand corner of that rectangular box, there's the S, set S. And if we go around on the spinner here, we can mark it up a little bit. Two is even, and four is even, six is even, and eight is even. If we look at the primes, remember from our previous notes that prime has factors of one in itself, and one is a number all by itself. So one is not considered prime. But if we go through and we mark this, two is a prime, three is a prime, five is a prime, and seven is a prime. And now that we have those marked, one of the things that we hopefully immediately notice is that one of those numbers is both even and prime. And that's the number two. And that's going to go in the overlap here in our diagram. But once we know that, we can fill in the rest here. The other evens are going to be four, six, and eight that we have identified. And the primes, the other primes, are going to be 3, 5, and 7. One thing to notice is even though our spinner has the 1 on it, it does not fall into the category of either even or prime. So what we do is we just write the 1 outside of um, the circles where we're looking at those. So we've filled in the Venn diagram, and we're going to use that here in a minute. So it says, when we have two or more sets, we can talk about either their union or their, or their intersection. Their technical definitions are given below. For two sets A and B, the union, their union, or, and their intersection, and, are given by these formulas or these definitions. Union, first of all, what I think about union is that they're joined together. And the symbol that you can see in here, it's kind of a U. It says A or B means kind of an A union B. And what that means is that some element, x, is in either the left part of the circle or the right part of the circle. That's what the union is. Um, by the way, it's often referred to as an or. The intersection is an and. It's denoted by an upside down u. And what that means is, when we look at this, x, when we're looking at some element x, x is in A and it's in B, 
In other words, I oftentimes think of it in both. So it's going to be in the overlap part of our, Gen of our Venn diagram if you look at that. So we had dotted lines over here. I cut those dotted lines out and I pasted them over here to the right for our definition. So now that we have a teeny bit of background with these, here's our Venn diagram that we just filled in. It says, from example one, write out the following two sets. Well, if it's A or B, then what we're going to get. So it's anything over here in the left circle or anything over here in the right circle, and we do include what's in the middle. So when we look at the A or B, our elements are going to be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And by the way, if you wrote 4, 6, 8, 2, 3, 5, 7, that's fine. I just put them in numerical order. If we look at the intersection of A and B, our element in the intersection is in this portion of the picture only. What is in the left circle and what is in the right circle? And the only element that is in both of them is that two in between there. So down here, on part C, it says from part A and part B, why is the equation the number of elements of A or B? Why doesn't it equal the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B? And then we'll say what would be the correct equation. But if you look back at our Venn diagram here, the elements in A are 4, 6, 8, and 2. So what happens is we've got four elements in A. And when we look back at B, we've got 2, 3, 5, and 7. We've got four elements in B as well. But if we're looking at the overall number of elements, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We only have 7 listed because the 1 is outside of the elements that we're looking at. And the thing is, 7 doesn't equal 4 plus 4. Well, what happened in this problem here is that we counted 4, 6, 8, and 2 to the left circle, and then we counted 2, 3, 5, and 7 to the right of the circle. So what happens is we counted 2 twice. So we need to take out that part here. So in other words, we've got four elements in A, we've got four elements in B, but what got counted twice? The 1, and now 4 plus 4 minus 1 equals 7. So how does the OR work? If we flip our paper over, the equation is here. It's called the probability addition rule. It will be provided for you on your green paper. So if you take a look at your green paper for a moment, um, it is on the side that has all the volume formulas, first of all. So flip your paper over to where it says the general prism, the cylinder, the sphere, the cone, the pyramid. And it's actually the very bottom formula on that paper. And it just says addition rule. It doesn't say probability. It just says the addition rule. But again, this is for or. So 
little or. And what happens is we take the probability of the event of A occurring, and we add the probability of B occurring, and then we subtract out when it's in both, with the probability of A and B is what's going to happen. So the nice part is you don't have to memorize this rule. But again, make sure that you know where it is on your OST paper, because then you don't have to memorize it. But as we look at some examples here, um, it probably will make more sense there than it makes when we just see P of A or B equals P of A plus B of B minus P of A and B. If we flip over here to our example, it says a small high school surveyed 52 of its seniors about their plans after they graduate. They found the following data and wanted to analyze it based on gender. In this case, if we pick a student at random, we can place them in one of four events. So if we see M, it means you're male. If we see F, that means you're female. If we see C, that means you're going to college, and N is not going to college. And we want to find the probabilities of the following. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use this chart. The nice part is that we already have this table in here and just something that you may see again if you look on Canvas is I kind of just separate that out a little bit. Um, personal preference. But we already have the totals in here, so we don't have to worry about the totals. We've got that. So the first probability on part A says find the probability of not going to college. Well, when we look across our chart, we've got a total of 23 students who say that they're not going to college out of a total number of students, which is the 52 seniors. And again, um, even though I don't have my calculator open, if we take 23 divided by 52, we get approximately 0.44. I am fine with the fraction. If you prefer decimals, there it is. So on letter B, it's the probability of being female and going to college. So we're still looking at the overall total here. <coughs> So we're still talking about the 52 seniors, but what we're going to do is we're going to go and take our finger and we're going female, so we're going to drop down from the female and we're going to put our finger on going to college and we're going to go until those two fingers intersect. So again, finger on female, finger on going to college and go across and what we see is that there's 13 females that are going to college. Again, if you type that into your calculator, if you prefer the, de the um, decimals, or you could type in the decimals, by the way, this is, it's actually an equal 0.25. But now when we get over here, part C, we do want to watch out for this OR. Because the OR now is going to require us to go back, and you can see it at the top of your paper, we're going to use this formula. So you could look at it on your green paper, you can look at it above in this particular case, but eventually you're going to be looking at it on your green paper. So what it says, it says, first of all, what's the probability of being female? So we start on this one. The probability of being a female here, there's 22 females out of, not 55, but 52, 52 seniors, and what's the probability of going to college? So it's just the probability of going to college, and the number of people going to college are 29, again, out of a total of 52. And now, Remember, we're double counting somewhere within the OR. So what we have to do is we have to take out. And what we're going to take out is where are they both female and 
going to college. But minus, now, again, this last part is going to be minus the probability of being female and going to college. And that's what we did on part, wrong way, but that's what we did on part B. We found the probability of being female and going to college, which is 13 out of 52. And we want to um, figure this out. So when we do this, we can take 22 plus 29 minus 13, and that's going to give us 38. Again, I didn't type in the whole fraction. You could. 38 over 52. And now that the calculator is open here, we can look at this from a decimal perspective as well. 38 divided by 52 is approximately 0.73, if you prefer the decimal. At a local animal shelter, there are 420 dogs that have been rescued. Of those dogs, 230 are Labradors, 300 are female, and 205 are both a Labrador and a female. If a dog is adopted at random, what is the probability of picking either a Labrador or a female. So again, when I look at this, it's a very small word, but that's what we've got to be looking out for, the word or. And when we see the word or, we need to use our probability addition rule. Again, it's at the bottom of the green paper on the same side as the volume formulas. So if we spell it out a little bit more clearly on this one, because we don't have a chart to use, what the question is asking, is, or what it's saying is, it says, what is the probability of picking a Labrador? So we're going to figure out the probability of picking a Labrador. So I'll use L for Lab Labrador. Or a female. So we're going to figure out the probability of picking a female dog. But within that, we're counting things twice because some Labradors are females. So we have to take out of there when we have the probability of both the Labrador and the female. So that's the both. Where are they both? So when we look at this, once we get here, now we're going to fill this out. The good news is on this is that our denominator, the bottom of the fraction, there are 420 dogs. So we've got 420 for every denominator. And in fact, even when we get the answer, we're going to get 420 for the denominator. So we look. The probability that we've got a Labrador. Well, we look up back up in the the second sentence, it says, of those dogs, 230 of them are Labradors. So it's 230 out of the total of 420 dogs. And 300 are female. Well, that's our next part. Probability that they're female is 300. Again, out of a total of 420, but some of those Labradors are also female. So we need to take out when we have both a Labrador and a female? Well, 205 of them are both a Labrador and female. Now, the nice part is on this one is we already have the denominator of 420. So we don't even need to use our fraction button when we're typing it into decimals or a calculator. We're simply going to take the 230 plus the 300 minus the both part, 205, and when we finish, we get 325 out of 420. That's our probability. If we type that into our calculator and look at it as a decimal, 325 
divided by 420 is approximately 77%, 0.77. But as we finish, watch out for the word or. And on example number five, it says insurance companies typically try to sell many different policies to the same customer. At one such company, 56% of all the customers have car insurance policies and 48% have home insurance policies. If 86% of the customers have either car insurance or, there's the or, if I can get there, there's the or, if 86% of the customers have either car insurance or home insurance, find the probability that a customer picked at random will have both car insurance and home insurance. So to start this problem, because it sounds kind of complicated and then we don't even have a fraction in here, we just have the decimals, but what we're going to start with is, it says at one such company, 56% of all of the customers have car insurance. So let's do the probability of car insurance here. And then it says 48% have home insurance. So C for car, H for home. We want to take out there the people that have both. So this is the probability of car and home. And when we finish, what's that equaling? Is that's equaling our or. And what we're using is the probability addition rule. So when we set this up here and we look at this, reminder that 56% is the same thing when we write it as a decimal if we move our decimal point two spaces to the left. So this is 0.56. So here's a place where we do use the decimal instead of the fraction. And then we had, and 48% have home insurance policy. So 48%, let's turn that into a decimal. Again, we're going to move our decimal point two spaces to the left. Percent means out of 100, so we're taking 48 divided by 100. So this is 0.48. And it says minus how many have both car and home insurance. Well, in this case, we don't know what that is. It says find the probability that a customer picked at random has both car insurance and home insurance. So if we go back to that last number there, it says if 86% of the customers have either um, car insurance or home insurance. So this is the, sorry, I got ahead of myself, the 0.86, the 86%. And if we move our decimal, we're going to move it one, two to the left. So we get 0.86. And now what we want to do is we want to solve that equation. We can write it as a percent to finish. So if you need to, you pull out decimals, you pull out your calculator. Uh, 0.56 plus 0.48 gives us 1.04. So we've got 1.04 minus x equals 0.86. And we want to solve for x. I'm going to leave my letter on the left. You solve it the way your Algebra 1 ta teacher taught you. But I'm going to move the 1.4 over to the right side here by subtraction 1.04. And we're left with negative x equals, and we can type it into our calculator, 0.86 minus 1.04 gives us negative 0.18. And then lastly, we don't want negative x, we want positive x. So we're going to divide by negative 1. And when we divide, we end up with x equals 
0.18. But when we finish, what we want to do, since the rest of the problem was written as percentages, what is 0.18 as a percentage? Well, we move the decimal back two spaces to the right, and our answer is going to be 18%.